Welcome to this video on Mechanics M1 and we're starting with constructing a model. So Mechanics deals with motion and forces acting on objects and mathematical models can be constructed to simulate real life situations. Okay, now obviously the scope of M1 is not going to simulate every real life situation for example you know like air resistance and stuff like that but it will get you started in thinking about these things now when we do this we do make assumptions and the assumptions then can kind of you know um what's the word affect the accuracy of the model should we say so this is what we do when we have a model. We start with the real life, the real world problem. Okay, and then from there we set up our mathematical model. Now when we set up the mathematical model, we are thinking about what our assumptions are, what are our variables going to be. Okay, from there then we solve and interpret it solve and interpret okay and then from there we check is our answer reasonable and if it's not we kind of go back to our model and readjust it and keep on doing that. And then if it is, then we report the solution. So that's kind of the process of creating or constructing a model. Okay, now for the most part, a lot of these models, they're going to be created for us and you're going to be testing them. But there are going to be cases where you, you are going to have to create a model from the kind of context of the question. So let's have a look at an example question at the moment. So this model... Um, is just the motion of a golf ball after it's been hit by a golfer and it's modeled with h equals 0.36x minus 0.003x squared where h is the vertical height and x is the horizontal distance so first part find the height of the ball when there's a horizontal distance of 100 meters so this is just simply a substitution where we substitute in 100 in 4x. And when I put that in my calculator, I get 6 meters. So mm, seems valid. Okay, it is certainly possible. Uh, I think if any of you do play golf, you would say that six meters is kind of an unrealistic height. Okay, so already this kind of model is starting to throw up um, some kind of, um, I would say, inaccurate answers. But at this point, you know, you could say it does seem reasonable. Okay, now let's look at part B. Okay, use the model to predict the height of the ball that travels 200 meters. So this time we are putting in 200 meters. And this time we get negative 48 meters, which is obviously impossible. So comment now on the validity of this prediction. So the model is not valid as when 
x equals 200, the height would have it as 48 metres below ground level. Okay. And this is one of those cases where, you know, is your answer reasonable? No. So you'd go back then to set up your model. So you'd go back and adjust what your model would actually see. So in this first uh, part of M1 is just looking at models and seeing whether they are basically reasonable whether they make sense in the in terms of the real world problem and obviously a 200 meter golf shot is about 220 yards 220 yards is you know a very reasonable golf shot you know to take with a, a long iron certainly a driver would hit you know further than that that's probably an average drive for an average golfer Okay, so that's the first example. Um, there's nothing else too much to do with this first little bit on constructing a model. To be fair, this first chapter of the M1 uh, course is relatively straightforward. I personally often skip it uh, and just leave it as a self-study chapter when I'm teaching this myself. Okay, so these will be just a few short videos just on the first chapter before we get into the second one and beyond. Anyway, if you've found this video useful up to this point, uh, hit the like button. If you're unsubscribed, hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, let's have a look at a few questions for yourselves. So here is the problem, just going to be one question in today's video. Pause it now, have a go at it, and then wait and look at the answer afterwards. Okay, so the first one is find the values of x for when the basketball is exactly 4 metres above the ground. So that means that 4 equals 2 plus 1.1x minus 0.1x squared. Or taking everything to the left, 0.1x squared minus 1.1x plus 2 equals 0. Then multiplying through by 10, we get x squared minus 11x plus 20 equals 0 and then using the formula you know minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a and we get 8.70 or 2.30 so two answers there now I know you can stick this into your calculator and obviously I did hit it into the the solving function but you should always show that so you know either factorize or using the formula before you just write down your answers because you always have to show your mathematical methods fully. Okay, you don't have to simplify this, but you should show it. Okay, so that's part A done. Let's have a look at part B. Now for this one, we're substituting in 3 for H. So again, rearranging and then multiplying by 10, we get this. Now this time this will factorize. So two negative ones there. 
So x equals 1 or x equals 10. Now k can obviously only be one of these. So we need to think about what's happening. And, you know, if you think of the basketball court like this, um, on it somewhere there will be, you know, your net with your backboard and the ball, you know, is being thrown from a player like here. And it's going to go up and down. And if this is the three meters, then this will be one meter to here. And then this will be the 10 meters. Okay, so K equals 10 in this case. Now, I think you would have to show um, or put a valid kind of reason with it. So, you know, something like this diagram or at one meter, the ball would be on its upward trajectory and 10 meters would be on its downward tra trajectory. OK, and obviously you need it on its downward trajectory to enter the net. Now, for X equals or x is greater than k so for x is greater than 10 what's happening so what's happening is the ball is going past the net okay so at this point uh it brings into other forces so it's coming back off the backboard so there's other forces involved which our model doesn't um, work for okay so the ball is going past or through the net so the equation will no longer be valid Okay, so other forces would come into play there. Um, like, for example, the ball hitting the net, so there'll be resistance, or going past hitting the backboard. So again, then there's other forces. So that's it from this first video. Um, like I said, the first couple of videos on this first unit are really straightforward. Um, you know, just fly through these ones and then let's get hopefully get stuck into, you know, more of the, the real mechanics, uh, starting with uh, chapter two.